Guess what day it is? Tuesday. Yes, but it's also the day that we show everybody our packaging. I don't want that on the internet. No, packaging for the cutting boards. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do it. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So our business plan is to sell personalized cutting and charcuterie boards as gifts for under $100 in hopes that the people who receive those gifts love them so much that they look us up and buy furniture from us. So how do we make them fall in love with us when they don't really even know us and the only thing they know about us is these boards right here? Well, we have to make them feel good. And how do we make them feel good? One way to do that is to make the best cutting board they've ever seen in their lives. We're talking about the most exotic woods, big, bulky, expensive, but unfortunately we can't do that method because the realtors can only spend so much on these closing gifts. So we've got to move on to the next method. Another way to do that is to make the boards look way more luxurious than they really are. Uh, we're not really about that. We're not Ikea over here. We're not putting end grain veneer on top of MDF or anything like that. So we can't really do that option. We still want to offer a high quality product. So we started thinking, what makes us excited to have a product? What makes us happy? Like really draws emotion out of us when we buy something new. For us, it's packaging. If we get something that just looks so cool and we unbox it and the company makes us feel like we just bought a very high quality item, it makes you happy. You just feel good. If we can't make a big ornate, perfect, amazing cutting board, maybe we can use some packaging that makes them feel like they're receiving a cutting board like that. So we are really bad at that kind of stuff. We're not big into like feelings and stuff either. So we're like, how do we make people feel luxurious? I don't know. We don't need to solve that problem. All we need to do is copy what everybody else is doing. We have a bunch of packaging from some random things. We're gonna take a look at it and see if we can't figure out some good stuff. And then this one is really special. We'll Sa explain that later. We'll save it for last. All right, so let's start with the OG, Apple. This is the box from our MacBook Pro. And just looking at it, at first, it looks really clean and simple. There is no question about what product that's gonna come out of this box. It's right here, my MacBook Pro. It tells me it's MacBook Pro tells me it's Apple, but in a very simple way. So right away, I know Apple, MacBook Pro. There's a picture of it if I don't like words. It's uh, it's very smooth. It's got like a matte, soft finish. It's not like shiny and sticky or slippery. Everybody's touched one of these boxes. You know what it feels like. The computer is in a special protective plastic sleeve. In here, we've got a little lining of tissue paper. So all the accessories were laying in their own specific little areas of this blow molded styrene. So there was like really no clutter. It was very organized. And How do you know it was blow molded styrene? Oh, cause I watch AVE sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, like, look at even the little like helpful instructions are in their own little packet. And this is like a nice matte black soft finished little box, completely unnecessary. Like, let's just think about it. Does this little booklet need to be inside of this? No, the booklet would have done fine sitting in there on its own, but it does not look as sleek. It does not match the black color that's in the rest of the box. So they did it. All right, so. <laughs> all right, so let's do something we all might be familiar with. Isotunes. Uh, when I got these, this is not a channel sponsor. I know they sponsor a bunch of woodworkers. Ain't nobody from Isotunes reaching out to us. But I was really impressed with their packaging. So uh, when you open the box, check this out. It's magnetic. Mounted magnets Mag within the cardboard. In there, you've got some closed cell uh, molded foam. That's what the headphones were sitting in. Uh, you got extra earbuds, charging cable. Again, this little like cardboard sleeve to hold everything. Some of it has gloss on it and the rest of it is matte. So that's an extra process in the manufacturing. This is a very expensive box. It even says OSHA compliant. That's not a cheap seal to be able to put on a product. Um, 
just an interesting box. Uh, thought we might all be familiar with it, so just wanted to use it as a good example. Uh, let's do another Apple product. What blows my mind about this specifically, it's a, it's, this is not a standalone product. You've already dropped about $1,000 on the iPad. The pencil is an accessory, and they still go to this length to make the accessories feel good. So when we start doing our finishing kits and stuff like that for these uh, cutting boards and serving boards, we want to make sure that we make the packaging match for the accessories as well, because I mean, if Apple's doing it, it's probably worth doing it. Okay, next we have the holy grail of all of our packaging items, and that is some Chanel, uh, not jewelry, cotton. Lay cotton. Lay cotton. Did you even know that Chanel sold little cotton squares? I didn't, but you know who taught me about it? TikTok. Basically, what people were doing is they realized that this was like the cheapest item that Chanel sold. It's not helpful, it's not practical, nobody needs expensive Chanel cotton squares. But you know why they got it? The packaging. The packaging is immaculate. People just loved opening it up. So much so that they're back ordered on this stuff. We couldn't get this from the Chanel website. We had to go to eBay and get it and pay more for it, but anything for you guys. So here we are. We're gonna unbox this Chanel Le Cotton Maker Knife. Also another product that had great packaging. Shout out to you, Jocko. See that? Yeah. We don't have that box. We just got a little bit of an issue. Uh, this is not the box we thought it was. We it's still nice. It's still good packaging and everything. But it's just the interior box. There was another box that this came with. We Dang paid, it, eBay. We paid more money dollars for less packaging. This just. See, if we were Gen Z, we would have known that this wasn't the right thing. A bit of a loss, but no, I think we can still take something from it because look, you're like, they're selling you cotton. This is the most basic little like- They're, se they're selling a motion. They're not selling a product. So it can be done. Like, look at, this is a massive company, Chanel, and they're selling something as simple as cotton using their packaging. Okay, so now we're gonna take what we've learned and use it to figure out what we should do. Who the whiteboard? So in all of these cases that we just looked at, every single one of them had to start with a nice box. And then once we opened it up, we saw that they had some really nice filler around the product, whether it was plastic, whether it was little zigzag corrugated cardboard pieces, some form of nice filler. And then just to build suspense, the product was wrapped in its own wrapper. And we also noticed their branding was plastered everywhere, outside the box, inside the box, on the cards, on the containers. So. Branding is something we have to pay attention to. So these are the four things that we definitely need to hit and that we need to do right because all these other companies are doing it and it seems to work really well for them. Um, but like we said, we're not really good at this. This type of feelings thing and doesn't come naturally to us. So let us know if we missed anything on this list or if you've had any experience with packaging and you know what works well for you and your customers, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> let us know that down in the comments, please. Hello. Hi. You'll never guess where we are. You, you might ask yourself, why are you two at Ikea? Perfectly good woodworkers who could make their own furniture that'll last a very long time. Why are we sitting in the parking lot of Ikea? I've never been to Ikea before. Me neither. This is, my, this is our first time going to Ikea, so I'm kind of like I'm expecting really, to be overwhelmed. I'm intimidated. I've heard you can get lost in these stores. I heard you get trapped. I heard they feed you horse meatballs. Ooh. Did you hear about that a couple years ago? Now, Ikea used to be a startup. Yeah. If you read the story on Ikea, like they got laughed out of a bunch of furniture manufacturers. They built their own brand for this flat pack furniture and the, oh, the customer has to assemble it themselves. Yeah, that's that was stupid. weird. That's ridiculous. And now look at them. They're the size of a hospital building. So hopefully we come back alive.
Well, that was an adventure. Yeah, and all in all, I would say I get it. Like after seeing it, I get why people love it. I get why people go back. You had to get lost in the store. Yes. They made you walk through ev almost every section of the store before you hit checkout. There was no other option. Which is brilliant on their part. And right. There's free Wi-Fi, there's food. There is no reason to leave that store if you've got five hours to burn. We need a kitchen island and we designed one. We mm -hmm. drew it up in SketchUp. It looked very nice. We knew exactly how we were going to build it. And then we realized that we would be wasting two days worth of building time on ourselves instead of our business. You know, after thinking about it more in the store, like we need to save time more than we need to save money right now. So we just decided Ikea was the place to go. And really the question we needed to answer, at least for me, was like, I felt kind of like a hypocrite wanting to go to Ikea when I have of a woodworking course. business. And you might feel that way too, but you know, in all honesty, Ikea is serving a certain type of customer mm -hmm. and you are serving a certain type of customer with your custom stuff. They're two different people. We, like, I would never buy anything that we built. I just wouldn't. It's I wouldn't high spend quality. the money. It's very nice. I would love to have it. But I wouldn't pay the money for it because I don't see the value in it. I could build it myself. I am not my target customer. And that's totally fine to not be the target customer that you're selling. To. There are 8 billion customers out there. There's no shortage of money on this planet. There can be three Ikeas in the world. And there would still be people who preferred to have very nice custom furniture in their home instead of Ikea furniture. And that's where you come in. So it took us a few weeks, but we finally decided on our packaging. We sourced all of our materials. And based off of that list that we made on the whiteboard, all those elements, we figured out a way to incorporate them. And I think the easiest way to show you guys what we decided on is to just pack a box. So we have our board right here and we want to put it in our wrapper. Here we have just some basic freezer paper. Um, we did get a custom stamp made with our business logo. And so we just stamped that right on the paper just so people can right away see our branding and they're never confused where anything came from. So once we open this up, cause we cut it to size for our board, we set it in there, cover it up. And that's just gonna build anticipation. People can't see the product as soon as they open up the box. So it's a bit overwhelming. It's like. What do I do? I need to untie this before I see my board, but there's a lot going on. So this paper is actually special paper. It's freezer paper. So the outside is just like normal white craft paper, but the inside has a plastic coating so that our oily finish from the board doesn't leak through the paper, like a paper bag at a fast food restaurant. We don't want big grease stains all over our paper when the customer opens this box. So that's how we got around that issue and it's worked really well so far. So moving on to filler, we're gonna use this black crinkle paper to just put around the product just to make it look really, really nice. This stuff is great because it's really, really light. So it's not gonna add a whole lot of weight to the box. Then when we need to ship it, this isn't an added cost that we're shipping. Recyclable, it's nice and thin. It's just really easy. And now the fun part, this is the box that we designed. We really like it because it's like a nice thick cardboard, so it's pretty durable. And then following all those other companies packaging that we looked at earlier in the video, we just went with our nice simple logo right on top for some branding. On the back of it here, we have a square for a packing label. So there's no question of where it goes. You know exactly where to slap it on before you ship it. As they open it, the first thing they see is that they're very overwhelmed with everything that's in this box. So, I mean, they're seeing the crinkle paper, they're seeing this white paper, the twine, the stamp, the colors of the box, and they see our social media right here in hopes that they will like the box enough and think it's pretty enough that they want to post it on their own social media. We kind of designed the box for the sole purpose of sharing on social media. Because if you look at it, we've also got our company name right here on this flap. And as the person starts to untie and undo their packaging, right away, you've got the perfect setup for like a beautiful Instagram picture. And that you're done. That's all people need to see. They share it and other people will instantly know who we are, what we sell, and they know where to find us. And even if they don't share it, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. We just want them to be so excited to open it and to have it. So as for where we got some of this stuff, a lot of it came from Uline, which is a company that's known pretty much all around the world for their commercial packaging and items that they sell. And as for the boxes, Oh my gosh, there are so many different sources for these boxes online. If you just Google like printed boxes, you will get 
endless resources. So we honestly just picked one and went with it. So it really does help to do a little bit of research, like just, you know, a couple of Google searches here and there for the items will bring you a long way. All right, so we hope that you enjoyed our packaging video. I hope you learned something. Uh, we're super excited. There's really not much left to do for us other than to set up the web page and start talking to people. <laughs> a couple of you have expressed interest in maybe buying a board uh, for a holidays or something like that. If that's something that you're interested in, we'll leave a link down in the description. Uh, we're not really expecting a huge order from that, but uh, yeah. If you wanted to know, now you know. It's there for you. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribe so you can follow along our journey of us bumbling through Houston trying to start a furniture business. Anything else? I don't think so. We'll see you next time. All right, so if you guys want to see the entire process of how we chose the board, build the board, package the board, everything, go back and watch these last videos and see how we did it all.